Well, Horizon Forbidden West has finally released, and I actually did play all the way through the first game, way back when it came out, despite the fact that ultimately I'd say it was a fairly average game, a bit above average, we'll say. With the monster hunting elements clearly being the best part, and everything else being incredibly mediocre and forgettable. And so, when the sequel was announced, I'll be honest, I didn't really give a sh- Mamma mia! Especially since there's already been so many sandbox and open world games in the last eight years, and basically no innovation in sight, but finally got a PS5, so I decided to check it out. It's not like I hated the first one, it was fine. Despite being just fine, it sold 20 million copies, so clearly, some people liked it. So is Forbidden West an improvement on the first game? Well, before we get into this, do the things the algorithm likes, I think you all know what that means. And without further ado, let's hunt some robot dinosaurs. So of course, I like to talk about gameplay mechanics first, but I think for the sake of this review, especially since the sequel is very similar to the first one, and if you're watching this, you likely did play the first one, or at least have some knowledge of it. I'm just going to group together the entire combat experience as one section. Because ultimately, this is just Baby's first Monster Hunter. Some people are going to be pissed off by that comment, I already know. But if you had to boil down the appeal of this game into one thing, it's hunting those giant robots especially the robot dinosaurs specifically. Because truth be told, it's a very cool concept and it's probably the best executed part of this and the first game. And you hunt down said monsters with a variety of different weapons. And in the sequel's case, this is probably where the biggest improvements were made as there are now roughly twice as many weapons as there were before and they actually added new moves for each one as well. And while there are a lot of other elements to this game other than the monster hunting, that's why everybody played this game, let's be clear. And the reason I call it Baby's First Monster Hunter is because each weapon class is incredibly simplistic despite those improvements I mentioned. So this time around you can actually hold six weapons at once, which is definitely a great change I'll be honest, it gives you a reason to actually try out a bunch of different weapons. And in the beginning of the game, your elemental attack choices are kind of limited, so it's necessary to hold six different weapons just to cover all your bases. And as you might expect, since there's elemental damage types, each machine has an elemental weakness. Now, they actually usually have two different weaknesses, or even three, one of which just being a vulnerability to a specific status effect that each element can give but also a secondary weakness depending on the type of elemental pod type that that machine has. Meaning that a fire elemental machine, you know, that could breathe fire or maybe shoot like a flamethrower or something, if you hit that with a fire arrow, it'll blow up the pod in a huge explosion. Which in the first game was by far the most efficient way to take down most machines. It seems to be a little bit more difficult to do that in this game, I guess they realized taking down the harder robots was a little bit too easy. Though to be fair, some of that might be because I played this game on hard, and to talk about that for a little bit, there's a hard and a very hard. I'm glad I didn't choose very hard because hard felt extremely unbalanced in the early game. We're talking the most basic enemy type could kill you in two hits, and sometimes just randomly could kill you in one. I don't know if enemies have critical hits in this game, but there's multiple times in that stream where I just lost 90% of my health or the entire thing in one hit randomly. Very frustrating, not sure if it's a bug or not because this game is a bit buggy, to divulge into that tangent a little bit. It's not super buggy, especially for a game of its size, but I did have one moment in particular where the frame rate pretty much went to shit and it never came back until I exited out of the game completely. On top of this, the auto climb seems to be bugged. Sometimes Aloy just won't grab a ledge, which is very annoying, especially since some of these climbing sections are essentially puzzles in the miniature dungeons, I guess you could call them. They're old world buildings from thousands of years ago, you know, but they're mostly puzzle sections. 
And so failing a platforming section in that is a pain in the ass because you gotta redo the whole thing again. But back to the combat, essentially, kinda like Souls, or again, like I've compared to earlier, Monster Hunter, it's hard to describe just the mechanics by themselves because the entire appeal is the interactions with the machines. All of them have different move sets and different attack patterns. Some of them are completely unique, like the hippo can actually essentially suck you up like a vacuum. And the T-Rex has like missile launchers and laser beams and that sort of thing. And if you played the first and thought there weren't enough enemy types, that's probably the best thing I could say about the sequel is that they pretty much doubled the amount of machines in the game, while still making them feel somewhat distinct. While some of them are clearly just palette swaps, essentially. Like the new Watchers are basically meerkats, but functionally they don't do anything different. But in the case of, say, the Velociraptors or the aforementioned Hippo, and there's also a giant tortoise that has guns all over it, those all felt pretty unique and were fun. So I guess to sort of give you a quick summary or rundown of how these fights go in case you didn't play the first game, you're essentially using your bow or your slingshot or javelin thrower, etc, etc, to hit specific weak points on the machines, whether that be the pods I mentioned earlier that you can explode with the same element, or maybe a specific weak point you can knock off and pick up as a material to craft things, obviously very derivative of Monster Hunter. And you can also set traps like explosives or trip wires from your trip wire launcher. You also have a Dark Souls style dodge roll and you craft your various ammo types in the field and shoot the monsters in the weak points and they die. That's pretty much it. You'd have to spend a lot of time going in detail with specific machines to really describe the combat in more detail. But again, much like Monster Hunter, the entire appeal of the game is just the monster itself that you're fighting and their AI patterns. Now what makes this far inferior to Monster Hunter, again, is those weapon types. In Monster Hunter, every single weapon was a different playstyle. For example, I played Charge Blade, right? It was a very combo-oriented weapon, meaning that you would have to memorize different button combos to charge up the sword, and then you use the sword to charge up the shield. And when the sword and shield are charged up, you could essentially combine the two weapons into a giant two-handed axe and swing that thing around, right? And it had its own combos. And when you ran out of charge, you had to charge it back up again. This obviously played completely differently from the great sword or the lance or the dual blades or the bow. They all had unique mechanics that made it so if you wanted to learn a new weapon, it was almost like you're playing a completely different character. Now for this game, that's not the case at all. While each weapon does feel somewhat distinct, at the end of the day, most of them function the same. But the weapons feel distinct enough to still be fun, but there's not much complexity to them. Even with the unlockable weapon stamina moves, which to very briefly talk about the skill tree system, they greatly expanded the skill tree from the first one. I don't really remember how it worked, but I'll show that on screen here. But now, you have like six different fucking skill trees. Now, they're not very complex, they're definitely a linear progression system. You're not really making choices except to just favor whatever gameplay style you like the most. Whether that be the incredibly basic and simplistic melee combat, which I didn't really talk about because you're mainly only going to be using it against other human enemies, which are the least interesting enemies to fight by far. Or maybe you could focus on the bow and arrow, or you could focus on stealth, which is also very simplistic, as you would expect. Or maybe you like setting traps, which are actually surprisingly pretty useful. They do a lot of damage. Which actually reminds me, one of the unique mechanics that I will give in this game's favor is that you can override machines and have them as allies. Now, in the case of any machine that's not a mount, I believe it's only temporary, but still, having a very powerful ally in battle is pretty useful and interesting. And you can ride more machines than you think. I actually rode the Warthog machine for a lot of the game. It was pretty cool riding this huge boar. And I think that's pretty much as good a place as any to stop talking about the combat. I could talk about more specifics, but honestly, it's the type of thing that you should probably just play the game for yourself if this looks fun or interesting. That being said, you have to weigh it against all of the numerous negatives that this game has. Very, very numerous. I'd say anything that is not 
fighting machines is either bland and derivative or just flat out insulting and kind of pisses me off to be honest. Which I guess we'll just transition into the open world section because, well, if you're gonna make an open world game, the open world better be interesting. And the only thing that's interesting about it is the visuals. And as you know already, if you watch me, I don't care about graphics and I never will. Yes, it's pretty to look at for a while. Eventually, it's just gonna fade into the background because graphics are not what makes a good game. Never have, never will. It's just to appeal to the normie types. So, what can you do in this open world? Well, to put it very simply, it's a discount Witcher 3. I feel like ever since Witcher 3 came out, so many open world games want to just take from its style because, well, it was a pretty decent style, all things considered, but I do have my own problems with Witcher 3's open world, namely that exploration felt kind of pointless outside of specific quests. Luckily, this game is not quite like that, but it's close. And namely, the most important thing that sucks about it is that the quests all fucking suck. And part of that is because of something that I'm not going to talk about here, I'll save it for the end. If you're a fan of me, I think you already know where I'm going with this. But for now, let's just say I was not interested in the story of any of these side quests. I didn't care about any of the characters any of them i'm serious not a single character in this game was interesting to me at all same goes for the first game i literally forgot everything about the first game except aloy herself and lance reddick's character that's it i forgot basically fucking everything and i'm already forgetting what i played at this game too it's awful the writing is shit but my point is, the quest design itself is not interesting either. Again, they ripped the worst parts of Witcher 3. Remember in Witcher 3 where you had to like, scan tracks and follow them? Was that fun? No, it wasn't fucking fun. It might as well have been a glorified loading screen for the next part of the quest, and it still feels like that here. It's so boring to scan stuff with the focus. And so, side quests in many cases are supposed to be the best activity of a quote-unquote RPG, though I wouldn't really consider this an RPG. But let's just say for an open world with quests, the quests are supposed to be the highlight. So what else is there to do? Well, there's various points where the machines are marked on the map, so if you need to farm them for specific parts, you know where to go. There's old world ruins, which are essentially mini dungeons or a puzzle area where you have to figure out how to get to the loot. Really nothing you haven't already seen before, especially from the first game. The cauldrons also return from the first game, basically machine factories that are a sort of dungeon as well. That once you get to the end of them, you fight a mini boss and then you unlock a few new overrides to turn machines on your side. Now, unfortunately, for some reason, you actually have to craft an override for some of the new machines, which just feels completely unnecessary, but whatever, I guess. In any case, this is yet another element of the game that feels uninspired because it literally was in the first one, and it doesn't feel much different in this one. Maybe more platforming puzzles than last time? I don't really remember. Either way, they don't feel as fun as they probably should be. Oh, and it wouldn't be an open world game in the modern day without Ubisoft Towers. And yes, much like the first game, you have to climb on top of these brontosaurus looking machines. And just doing that in itself is kind of a minor puzzle because you can't climb on their legs. Not much to say here other than I'm fucking tired of climbing towers. There's nothing you could do with this type of activity that would make it interesting at this point. I feel like developers have thought of everything. I don't like this. I don't want to do this anymore. Please stop. And believe it or not, that pretty much covers all the major ones. There's also various hunting challenges you can do and some other minor activities that honestly aren't really worth mentioning. The exploration factor here is very minor. Very rarely did I feel like it was actually worth my time to go explore stuff. And while the quests are worth doing because they reward skill points, which is obviously very important given how massive the new skill trees are, I still fucking hated them and skipped all of the dialogue because all of them were boring. Even with characters that were returning from the first game, first of all, I didn't even remember half of them. And even if I did, 
I didn't care about them. So yeah, fuck the side quests, and the open world itself is just, it's okay. And I didn't really know where to complain about this, but uh, much like with Dying Light 2, this is another modern game with a painfully bad tutorial. So fucking slow. So much dialogue. None of it even mattered, by the way. It was just poorly designed. I feel like if your tutorial takes more than 30 minutes, you fucked up. And this tutorial was over an hour long. And sure, it was a little bit longer because I played on hard, and like I said, hard is not balanced. The tutorial was one of the hardest parts of the game, which is very funny. But it wastes so much of your fucking time with all of the worst gaming sins, like I mentioned before. Forced walking sequences, pointless dialogue, pointless cutscenes, interrupting the gameplay every 30 fucking seconds. Holy shit, dude. You think I'm joking? There was multiple times in the stream where it was literally less than a minute between cutscenes. This is a video game, not a fucking movie, Sony. Every single Sony exclusive wants to be The Last of Us, and it's fucking pathetic. It worked for The Last of Us because it was well written. Almost everything after that wasn't nearly as good, especially not the second game. But yeah, if you're the type of guy who just wants to get into the game and have a good time, this game is not for you. But I suppose you already knew that given that this is a Sony exclusive in current year. Even fucking Ratchet and Clank had a cutscene every 15 minutes. So now we get to the part of the video that I was dreading because it was the part you all knew I would talk about. The fucking political angle, if you want to call it that. Or we could just say creative vision if you want to be naive. This is the least believable world I have ever seen. And you could say it's not supposed to be realistic because, oh, there's robot dinosaurs and it's 10,000 years in the future or whatever. But if it's not supposed to be realistic, first of all, why did they fucking model Peach Fuzz on Aloy's face? Really? I'm not even going to talk about whether or not that's realistic. I don't care. What I do care about is that they wasted fucking time and effort to make Aloy even uglier than the first game. And you know exactly why they did it. They wanted to make a point that any girl can be a champion that'll save the world and can do anything. And to get that point across, you can't make the woman attractive because it'll make all the ugly ones jealous and seethe and moan on Twitter. But I guess she wasn't average looking enough in the first one because they made her even fucking uglier. The original E3 trailer was correct, that was not just a bad angle. They actually did make her skull wider for some reason. That's why everybody thought she was fat now. She's not fat. It looks like she was on fucking growth hormone like Joe Rogan. Her skull literally got larger. Let me just state that I unironically do not have a problem with female protagonists, especially when they're well written. The reason I had the female protagonist counter in my Video Game Awards video is because they're almost always poorly written or just modern stereotypes of the strong female character, which just means they're a Mary Sue, they have no flaws, and Aloy is yet another example of that. Her only flaw is she's an introvert. That's her flaw. Other than that, she's the generic messiah. She takes care of everybody's problems. So she doesn't even really have a character, so that's already insulting. I mean, seriously, can you describe Aloy to me? Tell me what some of her personality traits are. She doesn't have any. She's a vessel for the female audience that supposedly this game is for. Well, I can guarantee you it wasn't 20 million women that bought the first game. Absolutely would fucking bet my life on that. And not to mention, just like the first game, everyone still has fucked up teeth, even though that makes no fucking sense. If you know anything about ancient humans, you know that we had perfect teeth because we had wider jaws. The reason we need braces today is because we don't chew nearly as much, so our jaw muscles are smaller, and our actual mouths are smaller as well as a consequence. And so our teeth can't actually fit in our mouths, so they get fucked up. If you look at any skull from like 10,000 years ago, perfect teeth, okay? So it makes no sense in a tribal society 10,000 years in the future that everyone's teeth are fucked up. They would be chewing shit all the time, whether it's beef jerky or nuts or I don't know, it doesn't matter. The point is, they didn't have our modern soft sugary diets that fucked up our teeth and our mouths. 
so they just made him have fucked up teeth to make him ugly. That was the whole point. And everyone's fucking ugly. It's not just Aloy. I wish it was only Aloy. No, it's everybody. They somehow, in the future, genocided every single attractive person. It's ironic, because the world itself is beautiful, even though I don't care about it that much. And I think the machines are incredibly well designed. The only aesthetically pleasing design, I'd say, in the games are the actual robots. They all look great. Then the humans look fucking ugly. I don't want to look at any of them anymore. Literally, the most attractive people in this universe are just average looking. It makes no sense. It's like sexual selection doesn't even exist anymore. Or the machines that created all these clones, or maybe not clones, whatever genetic primordial soup that these people were created out of, made sure to wipe out all of the attractive genes. And to make matters even worse. I'm not going to talk about the obvious feminist implications of this game that almost every important character and every good character and even major evil characters are female with a few exceptions of course but no i'd say that would be okay if there were still strong male characters no quite literally the men are all effeminate and weak even Erend, or whatever his name is, from the first game, from the fucking Forge tribe, the Osram or whatever, the first thing he does when he talks to Aloy is bitch to her. That's like, oh, you left us alone, which, yeah, that's a dick move that Aloy doesn't even really apologize for, but he just kind of takes a back seat and doesn't do anything of importance. And Varl, the only other real major male character, well, except arguably Silens, but you mostly see him from afar, Lance Reddick's character, of course. But Varl is once again the modern trope of the slightly effeminate black man, because to have him be aggressive and masculine would be racist, so they have to make him sort of just the sidekick bitch boy who doesn't do anything of importance. There is almost literally a clan of fairies in this game who are in some kind of fucking hippie convent where they worship machine gods toiling the land and shit. Why is it that every man in this game looks like he hasn't done a single day of hard labor in his life when it literally should be the opposite? How did these people even establish civilization with these pathetically weak men? And of course, as you would expect, there are numerous times in the game where men are essentially told to shut up or are outperformed by women, you know. You just kind of grow to accept it at this point. When does it stop being about equality and it start being about female supremacy? Which unfortunately, there's a lot of real people who believe women can be just as strong as men despite having weaker bones and less muscle mass and a tiny fraction of natural testosterone produced in their bodies. But biology doesn't exist anymore according to the left, so, you know. That's the only thing that's cowardice about this whole thing, is they refuse to make fat characters. You're telling me everyone can have fucked up teeth, everyone can be ugly, but it's too unbelievable to have fat characters? You're telling me that's what pushes the line? Just do it, you fucking cowards. Make all the men fat and weak, and make all the women muscular. Then at least some people could beat off to it. Instead, what you have is the equivalent of shitting on the Mona Lisa, okay? If you want to see how an actual tribal society would function in a post-apocalyptic scenario, look no further than the Legion. And what does the Legion do? They enslave women and do horrible things to them. Because that's how it works. That's power dynamics. In a society with no government, no laws... Sure, you could argue the Sun Tribe, whatever they're called, they have some kind of government, like a pseudo-Roman thing, but even then, it doesn't make any sense. And we all know, obviously, why there's no equivalent to the Legion, because that would be problematic. You can't even have real bad guys in modern video games anymore. And in Fallout New Vegas, you could actually join the Legion, so that puts a head and shoulders above any other game like this. And I already know you pathetic Redditor cucks have disliked this video at the start of this rant, I don't care. You're literally ruining the video game industry. Every time I talk about gaming is dying, I'm talking about you. You who buy these shitty ass AAA games. It's fucking disgusting. I don't even want to talk about it anymore. It literally pisses me off beyond belief, and I believe that's exactly why they made it this way. They knew it would make the chuds seed. 
And I guess mission accomplished. Here I am complaining about it on the internet. All I know is, if I can get at least two of you to not buy this game, I'll have made a positive impact. Don't fucking buy this piece of propaganda shit. I would have said it at the beginning, but I didn't want to tank the watch time of this video, because I know how this works. I've seen it for myself over the past two years, multiple times. So, sorry if I had to lure you into a false sense of security by talking about the only good part of this game, that being the gameplay, of course. The problem is, when everything else sucks, that is enough to make a game unplayable. Even though I think, definitely by far the gameplay is the most important thing, it is not the only important thing. Especially when this game is gonna force you to spend so much time talking to these subhumans. I play video games for escapism. I want to see beautiful, unattainable characters, physiques, faces, whatever, in my fiction because art is supposed to be beautiful, okay? Sure, there's gonna be people who are gonna debate that and say that, you know, art should imitate life, right? So that's why we have all these uggos. Well, again, I point you to the cowardice. If they really want to imitate life, have some obese people, just do it, man. I fucking dare you, Sony, you pussies. The irony in all of this is that Guerrilla Games, before they made these shitty games, were known for Killzone. You know, arguably a generic shooter, but nevertheless, something with some actual testosterone in it. The Hellgast were sort of space Nazi types, but they were kind of cool, right? So those were real bad guys that I could actually feel something about, you know, whether that's stopping them or maybe relating to their plight in some way, whatever, right? Doesn't matter. Point is, they were compelling, they looked cool. What the fuck happened to the company that they make this? Honestly, the funniest part about this whole thing, right, is there was a point, recently, obviously, where I just decided, I don't want to play this game anymore. And so, guess what I did? I stopped playing it, and I started playing Dragon Ball Fusions instead, and instantly had way more fun. A 3DS game with very minimal graphics, but instantly way more fun than this. And many things are. I mean, if I had to recommend a game instead of this, obviously Monster Hunter World or Rise. While I haven't played Rise yet, I'm sure it's still good. Monster Hunter World was a shit ton of fun, way more complex combat, very little story so you can very easily skip it if it's not interesting to you, and yeah, pretty much just everything about it is better than this. And honestly, if you're one of those people that is able to ignore a severe amount of wokeness being in a video game, I still think you shouldn't get this, especially not at full price, simply because it's just the first game again. There's very few actual innovations here. While they did add some new weapons and some new moves with those weapons and a bunch of new machines to fight, everything else is the same. The open world is basically the same shit. The quests are all forgettable wastes of time other than to get skill points. The exploration elements are not interesting in the least. Very few of the question marks on the map are something worth your time. Just don't fucking buy this. It's another fucking open world game that wants to waste 50 or more hours of your time. That's all it is. Don't fucking buy it, dude. Don't do it.